Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be solving a Physics 7C practice problem on photon energy and wavelength and quantum mechanics. Remember, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Your support helps a lot and we really appreciate the feedback. Okay, so here's the problem. Feel free to pause the video and copy it down so you can follow along. So it can be shown that the energy levels of a quantum harmonic oscillator, for example, a vibrating chemical bond, obey a very simple equation. That is E sub n equals the energy times n plus one half, where n can be any integer, one, two, three, or four. n can also be zero, and this represents the ground state of our system. That is our specific constant energy of the ground state of the system. Then we multiply each ground state by 1 plus 1 half, 2 plus 1 half, to get to the each excited state. The two questions we're going to be looking at for this problem are, for the case of the vibrations of molecular nitrogen, N2, the energy is approximately 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th joules. What is the wavelength of the photon emitted when a nitrogen molecule decays from its first excited state to its ground state? The second question we're going to be answering is, what wavelength photon must the nitrogen molecule absorb to go from n equals 4 to its n equals 5 excited state? So this problem has some calculations to do. I did those ahead of time, so as I write these out, I'm going to just give you the solutions of the calculator instead of showing you me plugging into the calculator. So I've already written out the equations we need. The first equation we need is the energy equation. They tell us that the energy for vibrations of a molecular nitrogen are about 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. So if we want to know what the wavelength is for nitrogen molecule to decay from its first excited state, so that's n equals 1 to its ground state, that's n equals 0, we want to know the wavelength of that photon. For wavelengths, we need to know the energy that is going into the photon. That's the amount of energy the photon itself has. H is Planck's constant, which is a constant value, and C is the speed of light, which is also a constant value. So those two values are given. To find the wavelength, all we need to do is find the energy of the photon. We can find the energy of the photon by finding out how much the change in energy is to go from n1 to n0. So let's take a look at this. So we want to see the change in energy. This is just saying, all right, we're given that E, the energy of a vibrating molecule, is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th joules. Now we just plug in our values. So we have n equals 1 plus 1 half. Put that in brackets. Minus, because we're doing the change, n0, our final state, which is going to be 0 plus 1 half. So we'll see the one-halves cancel, and all we get is 1 times 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th. So that's the amount of energy that is changed from going from the ground, or going from the ex first excited state to the ground state. So where does that energy go? So that energy, that delta E, that change in energy, has to go somewhere, and it goes to the photon. And that's the E we're looking for. That's the energy. Okay? So our energy we want to use for this, solving for the wavelength, we have our two constants, H and C, which I wrote up here, divided by this change of energy from the first excited state to the ground state, which is just 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th, times this, which is just 1. So we want to divide this by the energy E, of the photon, which is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th joules. So plugging in these two values and dividing by our energy answer, we get approximately 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So this is approximately our wavelength of our excited photon. So 
When we go from the first excited state to the ground state, a photon is released. It is given the energy that is changed from going from the excited state to the ground state. And this is the energy we have of our photon, which is 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th joules. And then our wavelength is just plugging into our equation, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Part 2 asks us, so part B, this was part A. Part B asks us, what wavelength photon must the nitrogen molecule absorb to go from n equals 4? So we want a delta E where n equals 4 to n equals 5 excited state. So n5 to n4. So we want to know how much energy our photon has so that we can figure out the wavelength. So what's this change of energy? We're saying it's going from N5 to N4 because we want to figure out what kind of photon is going to be emitted. So the wavelength of the photon that's going to be emitted if we were to play this backwards. And if we can find that, then we know the wavelength of the photon going in. So if we play it backwards and say, let's say we start in the fifth state and drop to the fourth, what is the energy of the photon that would be uh, released? So once again, we are given the ground state energy, 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th, times 5 plus 1 half, minus 4 mi plus 1 half. So solving this again, we see that the 1 halves cancel, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So our change in energy again from 5 to 4 is still 5.5 times 10 to the negative 20th joules. Using this wonderful result, we can see that the wavelength has to be the same as it was in part A, because our energy is the same. So if our energy is the same, we plug in the same H, because it's a constant, and C it's a constant, so our lambda is still approximately 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So we see from this that N2, molecular nitrogen, emits a certain and absorbs a certain frequency, a certain wavelength, and thus a certain frequency, um, of photon. Okay, that is the problem. If this was helpful, please leave a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to get back to them. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!